Hey, I'm Kari Wyatt, author of Gold and Shine. And if you uh, want to learn more about my podcast audio play, watch this video. I'm acquainted with them because I'm in the Playwrights Lab uh, at Antius. So I know the artistic directors and the executive director and, you know, a lot of people in the company. So working with them was pretty easy because I already had a prior relationship with them, just being around the building, being in the Playwrights Lab. But then to work on a project and actually work on a project with them, specifically, this particular zip code play was awesome. Because there was a lot of good feedback back and forth. And, you know, I always felt supported, which is the main thing when you're writing. Am I supported by the company? And I was. There was you know, there was nothing I needed that I didn't get, whatever that would be, research or ideas I could bounce off of them. And it was a good collaboration. Uh, the first zip code play, the things I learned from that that influenced this go around, basically I already knew the format. So the first time around, I didn't really know the format, the actual script formatting, uh, how the audio engineer would need certain signposts within the script itself in order to do what he needed to do. This time around, I already had that information. So when I was writing the script, I could write all the effects in where I saw sound, uh, where I saw where I saw sound effects going, where I saw vocal effects going, and it was already written into the script. So nobody had to come to me and say, "Hey, Jeff needs it in this format," <laughs> you know. And and it was everything was much smoother. I already knew what the process would be. So okay, I need to speak with the artistic director after I turn in this draft and get the feedback, and then kick out this second draft quickly and it, it all was smoother this time around before it went well but it was it was clunky at first because i just wasn't used to the audio formatting of the scripts and how i would need to tailor my writing to sound effects being included this time around it was seamless the idea for gold and shine uh, came about i just was looking for an idea because they were accepting pitches for zip code plays too and i was thinking i wasn't even going to submit and then i thought well you know let me just walk around live my life see if anything came to mind uh eventually i just happened to be online and i found something about the gold rush and i was like hmm the gold rush that could be interesting so i started delving deeper into the gold rush and i discovered that the actual first gold in California wasn't found up north. It was found in Antelope Valley down here in Southern California. And so then I was like, wow, that's an interesting history that most people don't realize. And I, in, in researching that topic about the gold rush, I discovered that uh, slave owners from the south came out here also to strike their fortune. And they would bring some of their slaves with them. And sometimes those slaves would run away and, and, and gain their freedom. So I was like, you know what? All of that could be very interesting history to incorporate into this audio play, along with the fact that Pacoima itself was really one of the only places in the valley where black people could live up until like the early 60s because of housing covenants and general discrimination. Black people weren't living in various parts of the city. It was either South Central or Pacoima was also another point another point in the uh, LA County where a lot of black residents lived. And then once housing covenants were broken and dis you know different uh, discriminatory practices were stopped, then black people started to move into other parts of the valley and other parts of Los Angeles in general. So I said, you know, all that is an interesting history. And even as far back as in the 1800s, Pacoima, before it was even called Pacoima, was a place that was very diverse. Whereas other parts of L.A. weren't, but Pacoima was always that. So I said, oh, you know, I need to set this here because I didn't know that about Pacoima. You know, I've driven past Pacoima. I've driven through it. I've, I didn't know there was this history of diversity. OK, the main character is a, a college professor named uh, Dr. Lachey Fair, and she is a professor at a fictional local university who's disaffected uh, by her job and by something that's happened at her job. And she is thinking of leaving the profession. And she runs into a man named Samson who is in her neighborhood, walking through the neighborhood, who has a mule. And they have some interaction and 
that interaction leads to some things. I won't get too far into it because I want it to be surprising. And she also has a friend who's a part of the story named Nona, who's also a college professor. The uh, team is uh, Sandra McLean. She directed it. I was introduced to her through our uh, associate, uh, through our artistic director, actually, Bill Brockstrup and uh, Kitty Swink. And uh, they uh, put me in contact with Sandra and she did a wonderful job. She was excellent to work with. She was very insightful and gave me some good feedback that uh, helped me make the story better, helped me make the story just a little bit more poignant than it was on the first draft I had written. Karen Molina White plays uh, Lachey. Tamika Kate Donegal plays her friend Nona. And Dale Turner plays Samson. And these are all Antius associated actors. They're in the company at Antius. And so I didn't have to go far to find talent. What I would like for the audience to get out of the play, what I would, actually what I would love for the audience to get out of the play is really not just the sense of the history of the gold rush or of what Pacoima was in terms of uh, a bastion for black people in a certain time period in terms of being able to live there. I would also like people to understand uh, how the university system itself is not just a place of education. You know, universities are corporate, are big business. They're not, they're nonprofits officially, but they're really big business. They have investments like, like, you know, they have investments like a corporation would have investments. You know, they are trying to make money in their way and people can be victimized by that. I'd also like people to get out of it that we are connected to our history. History is not just something that happened back then. History is always present. The things that happen in history don't just disappear. You know, the tendrils of it float through throughout time and space. The things that happened in 1860s are still happening today. You had that you had that uh, riot, that insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th. You had many of those people who would say blue lives matter, but they killed a, they killed a police officer. They assaulted police officers in that same insurrection. You know, the response to those people was much different than the protesters for Black Lives Matter who had been in the city just in June. The presence of the police, the tactics of the police force were totally diametrically opposed. So, and the FBI has informed Congress on a couple of occasions now that domestic terrorism, specifically white supremacists, are the biggest threat to our national security. This has been true for over a hundred years. So when you talk about the history of the Ku Klux Klan, you talk about the history of uh, Nazis, of white nationalists, we're still talking about the same things today. So because something happened back in the history, you know, doesn't mean it's over. It just happened back then, but you can still see a hand from back then into your, in, in your present day. So I really want people, if nothing else, get that. And the things that people have gone through to get you to where you are today. I want people to really appreciate that there are people who came before you that help you to get where you are. And that you don't live your life for that. You have to live your own life for the way you want to live it. But there is some honor that needs to be paid for those that paved the way for you to get where you are. What I'm looking forward to in season two of the Zip Code plays, um, just really basic. I'm just, first of all, looking to just hear a good story. I'm looking to go for a good ride. And I know the writers who are involved will give us that. But also, how they're able to, within that ride, incorporate the history of whatever Zip Code they're focused on, whatever Zip Code that they brought to the table. You know, because there's stories that I know I don't have any clue about that I would be totally surprised to learn of. So that's what I'm looking forward to on this go around, just like last time. I think any listener should come and hear the zip code plays. One, you're gonna be entertained. I mean, you know, that's the first thing. People wanna be entertained, they wanna go for a ride, just like I, I spoke of before. You know, I wanna go for a ride, I wanna hear a good story, and I wanna hear good performances. 
And that's why they should come, first of all, because they will be entertained. But secondly, because you're going to find out history that you didn't have any idea about. You're going to find out about these little places and some of these people uh, in L.A., in the L.A. County area that you didn't know about before. And again, the history and how it relates to today will be there for people to pick up on. And so I think not only will it make you entertained, but it'll also leave you with the ability to gain knowledge that you didn't have before. And in gaining that knowledge, actually making yourself better in a, in a certain type of way. Because when you have knowledge, then you can seek out more things that you didn't know existed before. And that knowledge will make you even a better person than you were before you came into it. Antius Playwrights Lab is, is a vital part of the theater proper just because it incubates new work. And, you know, in the past, Antius was focused on just producing the classic plays. But one of the functions of theater is also to bring forth new work, whether that particular theater company is going to produce that work or not. You know, it could be produced at any number of theaters across the country, across the world. But to facilitate the incubation of that work is one of the tenets of theater, to, to tell stories and give them to the world. So it's important that Playwrights Lab has served that function for Antius now for the last several years. And I think going forward, we'll continue to serve that function. And last year, actually, or two years ago, they produced the first two plays ever out of the lab with the Abuelas and Eight Nights. And Eight Nights just won an ovation or a couple of ovation awards. And the Abuelas also had a nomination as well. So I think going forward, Antius may produce more work out of the lab during their seasons. And, you know, as important as it is for any theater to incubate new work, even if they don't produce it, like I said, it can go to other theater companies all over the world. So Antius Playwrights Lab is important in that way because we have so many talented writers. I mean, Listen to the plays, listen, listen to the work. So many talented people, a lot of people who have had productions all over the country. So there's stories that are, are ready to be produced coming out of that lab, whether it's Antius or whether it's a theater in New York or Chicago or Seattle or wherever. If you're a writer who wants a community, a place that's supportive, a place that values what you do, Antius is that place. You know, like I said, we have a big group of playwrights in the lab and it's an extremely supportive environment. It's a very friendly environment. It's not like a snake pit of an environment where everybody's in competition with each other. I mean, people are really supportive and really want to see you generate the play that you want to, that you want to create. And within that, it's inspirational. Everybody's inspired by everybody else because you have so many different voices and so many different ways that plays are put forward. <laughs> you know, it just becomes everything rises. Oh, well, when it's safe to come back, I would encourage anyone to come to Antius to take in the show. The productions are always the highest quality. The best people work on them from costume designers, set designers, directors, actors. I mean, it's really a tight company and the talent extends to everything, but not just actors, not just writers, not just directors, but like I say, the technical crew, the technical staff, the lighting designer, the sound designer, the costume designer, the set designer, like everybody is extremely, extremely talented and very good at what they do. So the work is always well done, always. So I would encourage anyone to come and see a show. I mean, really, the art is the spiritual backbone of any community. It's the spiritual back backbone of your nation. The things that are happening, it's a time capsule, right? The things that I could go look at a play from Eugene O'Neill's time and find out what, what was going on in part of this country at that time period. You know, so on throughout the ages, that's what art serves to do. It, it shows us ourselves. It helps us connect to ourselves. It helps us connect to other people. It helps us to have experiences that we might not have had ourselves personally. 
It creates empathy at its best. You know, even if it's not an experience that you've had, somebody has had it and you see it played out in a dramatic form. And usually I would say when people see art, art connects in, with people in a way that a politician can't, com can't connect with a person. It connects in a way that an activist can't connect with a person. It really seeps into your soul, whether you want it to or not, because that's what art is. It reaches inside you when you see it or when you hear it or when you look at it. So Antius, like I've said, puts forth such quality work. So there's a lot for you to be moved by. There's a lot for you to learn from. And Antius does it at a, a high level with many different kinds of people. And if you were going to support a theater, Antius would be one to support because it's really coming from that place of art being pure, art making a difference in a person's life. Hey, I'm Kari Wyatt. Playwright, Golden Shine, a part of Zip Code Plays too. And if you've enjoyed this conversation, please go to Antius's website and support the theater in any way you can, whether that's volunteering or whether that's a cash donation. All help is appreciated.